Keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. Facts. The more people you talk to, the luckier you are. The more quality conversations you have, the more opportunities you find. The more opportunities you find, the more deals you do. The more deals you do, the more income you make. The more income you make, the more that you can build an incredible, profitable real estate business. And from there, if you've got profits, guess what you're going to do? You get to invest in assets. You get to go out there and you get to buy the best properties in the best areas that are going to appreciate, that are going to bring value and a return on investment to you and your family for as long as you want to own those properties. Properties on average last 100 years. That's three and a half generations. That's what property does. That's why it's so exciting. That's why... You, 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 when you own a piece of, piece of property and you understand that people go to work and they go to their nine to fives and they put 20, 30, 40% of their efforts towards paying you that rent, that is how you really, really, really make a huge impact, not only in your community, but in your, for your net worth, for your family. That's how you free up your schedule. That's how you control the time that you have left on this planet. And so I want to give you all the tools, not only the tools, because the tools, listen, you can get the tools anywhere. You can get the tactics. You can get the breakdowns. You can hear incredible um, uh, cold calls live on YouTube or Facebook or on podcasts or whatever else. But it's the confidence. You need to have the confidence. You need to have that certainty that what you are doing matters, that you are, you are progressing in your business. So I want, to, I want to break down. We do this every time on these cold call breakdowns. And I'm going to break down an actual cold call. And this one's going to be really interesting because I think this one can transition into something different. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it right now. I'm going to break it down, but it's going to be really, really great. And Ruth, the caller here, um, did a really great job with the tone and did a really great job with the seven fundamentals that you really need to focus on to be an absolute superstar on the phone. 
Uh, but I, but deep down, deep seated in your brain, that walnut sized part of your brain, that, that confidence, I want it to swell up to the size of a grapefruit. I want you to feel bulletproof when you get on the phones. I want you to feel like you are truly, truly, truly doing something special out there. And it's not just you sitting at home, making some calls, talking to strangers, getting rejected or hung up on, or people are being mean to you, or they're being nice to you or whatever else, right? It's all part of the game. But you talk to 200 people, you get one deal. And one deal averages 15,000, right? And so if you look at that and it takes you, let's say it takes you 20 hours to talk to 200 people because you talk to 10 people an hour. That means you're making $750 an hour. $750 an hour. What is it? Look at your current expenses right now. Look at your current expenses right now. If you were to be on the phones, making quality, having quality conversations with these property owners that own ugly properties or in ugly situations, and you solve that problem, you get you are highly paid for that. That's just a fact. And that's how you build this business. You know, I started out and was, I had a judgment on me. I couldn't even own real estate because I had a judgment. You might not know that, but if you have a judgment, the title company does a search on you and you have to pay that judgment off before you can own real estate. So I couldn't buy any real estate until I could pay off that judgment. You know, a judgment that I put on myself. I had signed an office lease for a, for a brokerage that I tried to open up and I was a big thinker and I wanted to do incredible things. And it put me in, and I signed a personal guarantee. So I had a judgment for $740,000. I had to dig my way out of it. And this is exactly what I did. And I just want to tell you that story, not to be like, oh, you know, he's really building rapport with me as an audience, you know, whatever else. No, I want, I want you to know that if I can do it, so can you. And that's really, 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 really important. Because once you have that certainty that if you just follow what I'm telling you here and you get really good at these seven steps, you're going to be unstoppable. And anything that you want financially, you will be able to achieve. I don't care what your background is. I don't know. I don't care what your financial situation is. I don't care if you have an accent. I don't care if you're 17 years old or 70 years old. You can do this. And you can make a huge impact and it's absolutely incredible and it's bananas and it feels great. And all of a sudden you empower other people that are around you. Woo! <laughs> it is absolutely incredible. So let's look at these seven steps before we dive into this. And I want you to recognize and uh, we'll kind of put this. I don't know if we can put this split screen, Matt, while, while we're listening to this. I don't know if we have the uh, ability to do this, but this is the perfect call. You're looking for four things. Condition, timeline, motivation, price. That is the skeleton of the conversation. If you're ever wondering, oh my gosh, like I don't know where to take this conversation. I don't know what questions to ask. I don't know, you, you, you know, I, I'm a little uncomfortable. I don't want to make any calls because I don't want to say something stupid. But I also, you know, I, I, I don't really know where to take this conversation to really see if this is somebody that'll do business with me, one. And two, is this an actual deal that I can go and actually get closed? because those are really important. So condition, timeline, motivation, price, we're gonna go through that. And I want you to recognize in this cold call breakdown, when you hear condition, timeline, motivation, price, and I'd love if you put one, two, three, four, put it back up, Matt, one, two, three, four on there, when we go through there, put it in the comment section, see if you can recognize it. Let's let's make this active. Let's not let, let you just passively you know, watch this as entertainment, like really get into this. And then the real skills, the real pros, happen at the at, at the last three. You got to actively listen. You got to confirm and approve. Don't cause friction in the conversation. Confirm and approve whatever they're saying. Doesn't matter how outlandish it is. Confirm and approve and answer a question and then ask a question back. Those seven steps, active listening. Uh-huh. Sure. Great. When you ask a question and people are responding to you and you're not saying anything, it feel it, that, that there's there's space in the conversation that all of a sudden awkwardness gets to creep in, and all of a sudden they're like, "Wait a second, why am I talking to this person? Wait, am I getting interrogated here? They just called me out of the blue, and then all of a sudden they're just going to ask me questions, and I'm supposed to respond to them? It's not going to work. Build the skills, all right? Confirm and approve. Doesn't matter what they say. Uh huh. Great. Oh sure. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
It's part of active listening, but it's also when they throw you that they want a million dollars for the property or they want something going on or, or, you know, I hate you, you guys calling me and all this. I know it's totally annoying. I know I'm just, you know, I'm interested. I'm really interested in investing in the neighborhood. And I just wanted to see if you would consider an offer and when you planned on selling that property completely understand if you don't want to sell, but when do you plan on selling that property? Right. And then you answer a question, then you ask a question. Never just answer a question with a question. I hate when people do that. And people do that all the time. And people on the phone hate when that happens. Well, how much would you take for the property? How much will you give me? Well, what are you looking for? No, no, no. You tell me. Okay, but if it was perfect, what would you give it? How much would you want for it? You know, all these things. Stop it. So let's break down this. I'm going to put on the headphones because it's easier that way. And we're going to listen to Ruth uh, do a really great job here. You ready? Here we go. Hi, I'm looking for Joseph. Sure, hold on. Always ask for the first name. Don't go full name. Don't go Mr. or Mrs. Go first name. You want to sound like you've had a conversation before. She's getting Joseph. And by the way, remember, uh, Dale Carnegie has taught this in How to Win Friends and Influence People. The number one word that is the most perfect sound to somebody else is their name. That's the, the, it's the magic word in any conversation as a person's name. Don't overuse it. That's gross. Hello. Hi, hello? this is Ruth. I was, hello. Yes. Sorry. Hi, this is Ruth. I was calling about a property. I believe you own them. Yes. Sorry. We cut out the address there for YouTube. I just wanted to see if you'd consider an offer on your property there. Oh, I always consider an offer. I love it. Remember this. When you ask somebody, guys, you can download the script that she's using here. It is the most proven script of all time. Everything else is watered down and it's supposed to be easier. And we're going to open We're going to start it with open-ended questions. It doesn't work. Use this script. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. It's been used millions of times. Billions have been made from the script. I'm not joking. Like around the country, it's been used more than anything else, and it's super, super effective. And people say, oh, I've heard that before. You get that on the phone. It's fine. Move past that, right? You just see if they're, they're ready to sell that property right now. You can get that script uh, at the link down below. Here we go. Okay, perfect. Well, we purchase properties cash. We pay all the closing costs. By the way, sorry, when you ask somebody, would you consider an offer in your property there? There's six responses that they're going to give you. In the script, it breaks down how to respond to each one of those six responses. The six responses are yes, they do want to sell. No, I don't want to sell. Maybe in the future, how much will you give me? Which is this one. Well, if it's the right price, it's always for sale. That's a version of how much will you give me? Who are you and how would you get my number? That's it. That's the six responses. There's no real estate commissions. And the best part is we'll buy the property completely as is. So for an offer like that, how much would you take? Uh, I, I don't have a clue. I would have to do a little research and see what the place is worth. All right, I understand. Beautiful, right? How much would you take for it? And sometimes, guys, I'm telling you, they just tell you. They just tell you flat out. Now watch, she's going to get it from them. She's going to pull it out. But what happens is if they don't answer that question, because you're kind of getting an idea. If, they're, if they have a price in mind, you know that their timeline is super short. So remember, we're looking at condition, timeline, motivation, price. Watch how she starts pulling it. If they don't respond to, well, I don't know. If they don't give you a price and they don't know how much they would take for it, then you got to go to the condition. It opens up the conversation, lets the conversation breathe, builds rapport, builds trust. And then all of a sudden, you can ask that question again after you've, after you've uh, lengthened that conversation. Yeah, well, the condition plays a large role in building an accurate offer for you. So could you tell me, have you done any recent remodeling to the kitchen in the last couple of years? Yes. And the All right. Anything, anything specific? Well, there's new cabinets and a new floor and new... Uh, 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 new roof, new siding. Yeah, it's got new roof, new siding, but the... Uh, it, They're obviously on speakerphone, which is the best. I love when older people just put the phone on speakerphone and they're just both answering the questions. It's hilarious. But 
Just a little side note there. But you see, she's getting into the condition of the property. And a great question there is to ask something specific. You can't just go, well, can you tell me about the condition of the property? Ask something specific or it might, the conversation might take a turn and they might just go. They might just go into, you know, crazy town and be on the phone for 15, 20, 30 minutes going over. So ask specific questions, right? What remodeling have you done to the kitchen and bathrooms in the last five years? It's very specific and it's important. Now, she just said, Ruth just said, hey, in the last two years, what remodeling have you done to the kitchen, which is great? It's got a um, new refrigerator, new uh, stove, yeah, <clears throat> all new electric okay. in it. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, wait a second, he's already remodeled this property. He's already putting in investment in this property. This isn't, this can't possibly be a wholesale deal. We talk about ugly houses, big checks. This is on a distressed property list, but it's probably on, I believe this one is, no, I know it's on. This is an absentee owner list that's owned for at least 10 years. This is pulled straight from Batch Leads, right? Uh, the, you, you pull the list of everybody that uh, doesn't live in the properties and they've owned it for a while and it's built before 1990 or 1993. You want to go about back about 30 years because you want some wear and tear on these properties. They're the bigger deals. So that's where this is. But sometimes when you call this list, you're going to boom right there. They've already started remodeling. This is somebody that is really taking care of the property. I'm going to tell you, she doesn't, she doesn't transition this conversation the way that I would, but um, she does a really good job. And then I'll talk about how I would transition this. Plumbing has been changed. Right. Okay. Um, what about in the bathroom? Have you done anything there? Yes, it, I did actually. It's been remodeled. It's got a sh uh, showering uh, tub enclosure and a, a new tub in there, a new toilet and new floor. Uh, it's all been pretty well re uh, renovated. Okay. Do you yeah. mind me asking, you know, I mean, if you put so much work into this property, what would make you want to sell it? Well, it's sort of a, uh, I would, yeah. Uh, Number three on the list, motivation. What's the motivation? This is absolutely incredible. Now, listen, I understand why she transitioned here. I truly believe that if you get the condition and you get their timeline, they will tell you the motivation. She went with this question. Ruth went with this question. And I'm fine with it. I don't prefer it. I like them to tell me naturally. I like them to trust me enough to tell me why they want to sell this property without having to ask it. It just... It lends to a deeper bond that we have on the phone, but I'm okay that she's doing this. And um, she's a little, she sounds a little scripted, in my opinion. I would, I would, I would pause a little bit. I would be a little bit more unsure. I would be a little bit, you know. Can you tell me? Um, can you, can you tell me about the kitchen? Have you have you done any major remodels? remodeling to the kitchen in the in the last five or so years you know what i mean like just not so so pro so clean i would like i want it to be more of more of um uh the way that i'm talking right now you know where it's kind of unsure just to put myself in a place where they're educating me when people teach you something, that's where true trust comes. That's where true, that relationship really starts building, and it's a lot deeper. I bought it, I bought it uh, on a spur of the moment for my kid, and then he bought a new house with his wife, and I just continue to keep this one. Okay. Okay. So is this a, a rental property for you? Do you rent it out? Yes, I do. Month to month, uh, or are they on a on a long term lease? Oh, monthly, monthly lease, monthly rent. Got it. How much do they pay, pay in rent? Uh, around uh, eleven hundred. Pretty bold, right? She's getting a lot of information here. It's rented. It's month to month, eleven hundred, right? It's interesting. It's a remodeled property. We're kind of moving towards something here, and I'll tell you what it is in a bit, but we're, we're moving towards a different kind of strategy here than maybe a cash as is offer. A month. Okay. Got it. All right. Um, just a, a couple more questions about the property. Uh, would you know how old the roof is? Uh, yeah. What, two years ago, three years ago, we got all the roof on it. Yeah, two years ago. Okay. Three. Yeah, say three. 
Okay, got it. All right. Um, yeah. What about the furnace? Would you know how old that is? Uh, no, now that's now that's been there a while. It's been there um, since we bought it, and I don't know what year we bought it anymore. But it's the same furnace that was in the house. Okay, so you don't know how long you've owned the property for either, though. Yes, yes. What year did we buy it? Now, this is an important question. How long have they owned the property? Now, you and I making these calls, we could click a button and we can figure it out. We could pull it up through our resources, uh, Batch Leads, PropStream, Zillow, and figure out how long they've owned this property, which is really important for these conversations that you're having with a property owner that does want to sell, but the, the property is remodeled, right? And, uh, and, and this is a really solid question that Ruth had here. Um, probably 2000. Okay. So the furnace is about 23 years old at least? Yes, I would say that. All right. What about the AC? Has that been around since the, about the same yes, time? Yes, it has. Yeah, it had no problem with either one of them. Okay, perfect. All right. And... I have this here, the two-bedroom, one-bath. Is that still correct? Yes. About 790 square feet? Yes, that's about correct. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, um, if we were to give you an offer that made you happy and worked for both of us, uh, do you see yourself selling sometime soon? I, I don't know. I would have to uh, think about that a little more. Okay. Got it. All right. Timeline, getting the timeline. She didn't get it, but it's an interesting, it's interesting to hear the response, right? I'd have to think about that a little bit more. He has not them as a couple, cause he's on speakerphone with him and his wife. Um, I assume it's his wife could be anybody, but, um, they would have to think of it. They haven't made the decision that they're going to sign a piece of paper, the deed that's going to transfer title to somebody else, which if you know that, that determines how you approach the lead follow-up. This is going to be a longer lead follow-up than somebody that's like, I would have sold it yesterday. I'll be done in a day. I close it in 30 days. We're done. Whatever it is. When they have that timeline, that's the hottest, hottest leads. Those take priority. Remember with lead follow-up, it's, it's, it's lead triage. Like you go into the ER at the hospital and if uh, I have a cold and your arm is cut off, they're going to treat you first, right? So the shorter the timelines, you want to really focus in on those. And these ones you got to nurture longer because they haven't made that decision yet. And you want to see if they're actually going to make that decision. And you want to be there when they do make that decision. Well, considering we do buy as is and take care of all the closing costs. She's going back at them. See what happens here? Watch this. She asked the question before. He didn't answer. Well, I'd have to do some research on what I'd want for the property. You have a longer conversation. You get into the condition of the property, and then watch what happens. Which you know, means that at the point of sale, there would be no money coming out of your pocket. Right, right, Do you have kind of a, a rough number in mind or just a ballpark number that you would be looking to get? Well, I wouldn't take under 100 for it. Got it. All right. Well, I will pass this information. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now she's going to process the information. She's going to set an appointment. You guys get it, right? Um, here's what I would do. I would transition here. I would transition this to see he's owned it 22 years. It's in good shape. They have a current tenant in the property. What if, what if you went with, do you want to be the bank? Would you consider because he probably owns it free and clear unless he pulled out a lot of equity from the property, which I just feel, I just, I don't know my instincts from, from talking to over 45,000, um, property owners, myself, my instincts are this person is conservative. This person likes paying off debts. This person is responsible. This person is upgrading the property. Maybe not, you know, perfect, but keeping it in really good shape. They're very responsible. So they probably have mm -hmm. very little mortgage, if none at all. So why wouldn't you transition to see, okay, well, it doesn't sound like he needs the money right now. What if we transition this to an owner finance deal where you give him 
let's say $600 a month, and then you rent that for $1,100 a month. It's rented at $1,100 a month. There's enough cash flow in there. You package that deal together, and then you wholesale that deal. We are doing so many creative finance deals right now that we're wholesale, not so many, two a month, but it's it's more than we ever did before. But it's like you package these together because you have a different strategy and the sellers don't really need a big lump sum. They don't know where they're going to put it right now with, with the stock market doing what it is and, and, um, and any other kind of assets right now just kind of stagnant, if not uh, decreasing a little bit. This is a perfect time to transition that. You've got a good clean property. You've got a good tenant. They want a hundred thousand for this thing. So obviously it's below the one percent rule of you know hundred thousand to eleven hundred for the rent. So you're getting solid rents for this property. Why not transition to a creative finance deal? I, I know this might sound crazy, but um, would you consider being the bank on this property? You know, I give you a down payment and I pay you every single month, but you don't have any more responsibility of the property. I own it but I just pay you. You're the bank now on this. So you get paid uh, and we can set this for the next 10, 15 years and pay it all off at that time. But this way you get a really nice return and you don't have any headache with this property. You don't have to do anything to this property anymore. You don't have to put another cent into this property anymore. Woo! It all happens if you talk to people, it all happens if you pick up the phone and you be brave and you start a conversation with somebody that you've never met before and you use these seven steps. One more time, Matt. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Condition, timeline, motivation, price. You're actively listening. <laughs> you confirm and approve and you answer the question. By the way, she did a fantastic job with her tone of voice. Remember, your tone of voice on the phone is your body language. It is most of what you say is coming out of, with your tone. And when you're actively listening like she was, you, the, the conversation rolls and opens up and it blossoms right in front of you like a beautiful rose. Whoa. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> God, I love this business. From one call, you from the, from, 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 from the air, you can pull out incredible income by just going and finding uh, ugly properties or ugly situations and solving that problem and, 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 um, and, and, bringing investment into those neighborhoods in the form of cash buyers. So with that, welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. live show, formerly the Progress Not Perfection. I love that, but we are all about Wholesaling Inc. live because I want to encourage you guys to enjoy the podcast, which is absolutely incredible, Wholesaling Inc. I want you to get all the tools and downloads that are at uh, wholesalinginc.com that you could ever need hundreds of thousands of dollars of value. Definitely check that out. And uh, it's a brand that I'm proud of. It's a brand that brand that I've been a, a part of for over uh, seven years now. And uh, it's changed my life. And um, I think that uh, it has it has the ability uh, to change yours too. But, uh, you know, nothing, nothing works unless you do. So welcome to the show. Um, we know that uh, the, 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 the most proven path to financial freedom is finding discounted properties. And I'm telling you, if I can do it, so can you. My name is Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP. I am joined by the incredible Mike Mahoney and Alejandra Merch. And uh, we're here for four main reasons. One, obviously, to, um, to answer questions. Two is to celebrate the success that you have. Three, to give you the tools and tactics to be successful. And four, for you to squad up in the comments section, make sure that you're putting where you do business so that you can find people of like minds. Because the fact is, when you go and tell people you wholesale real estate, they look at you like you're a crazy person. So find people that are of like minds and understand what you're saying. And let's rock and roll. Before we get started with questions and celebrations, I want to acknowledge the incredible Alejandra Merch. It is her birthday today. Everybody give some love to Alejandra in the comments section. I won't tell you what birthday it is. I'll leave that up to her if she wants to <laughs> disclose that. But I was taught uh, uh, a proper etiquette is never to ask a woman their age or their weight. That is good. Fact. <laughs> that is good. Definitely. But uh, yeah, that's it. Mike, what do you think? The seven steps. The seven steps getting in, being confident on the phone. You've made a lot of calls. Mm -hmm. You've done this yourself. We've been in real estate since 2004. Right. I mean, how powerful is it to be brave and get on the phone? That's all there is to it. The only thing, and you hit this in the end, you talk about tone of voice. Yep. So, And when you say tone of voice, you mean mirroring and matching how fast they talk and how loud 
or how soft they talk. Right. Right. And of course, Ruth did that because she's a pro, but that's what tone of voice is. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a step, but that's, that's a big part of building instant rapport with people. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I mean by it. You know, actively listening is part of just making sure that, um, you are, you, you're not, you're not bulldozing them. If they have a soft voice and if they have a loud voice, you're not just really meek and soft and barely audible. You know what I mean? Like you got to mirror and match it. I and love also it. Great not point. just being totally quiet. Right. Right. That's weird. Yes. You know, it's just, uh huh. Okay. Gotcha. You yep. make, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, let's crack this thing open. If you have questions, put them in the uh, comment section and uh, we're going to answer them. Fearless content. My first and last deal was in 2021. I closed for 6K, got lazy and stopped working. Ready to get back into this. Make a call. Talk to five people today, fearless. <clears throat> Be fearless. Be absolutely fearless. Just talk to five. Just start there, right? Like, I, I think a mistake that a lot of people make is they're like, oh my gosh, they, they, they feel guilty and that they stopped or the momentum got slowed down. And then all of a sudden they're like, I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to spend that all day on the phone and I'm going to white knuckle it. And I'm going to call so many people. Stop. Just talk to five, build up that momentum again, right? You were running a marathon. You trained for a marathon. You don't just sure. take a year off. And then all of a sudden you wake up one day, you put your shoes on, you run a marathon. That's what crazy people do, right? You train for the marathon. You go and you and you put in the work and you do a mile, you do a couple miles, you do a few miles. Not that I'll ever run a marathon, let's be honest, okay? But uh, <laughs> my dad does. Alejandro's going to run a half marathon. I've run a half marathon. You, you train, you get up to that point, right? So that's, that's what's really important. So just talk to five people today. Make it a point. And I don't care if they're on Craigslist. I don't care if they're on Zillow. I don't care if you talk to a realtor. I don't care if you talk to a property owner. Whatever it is, don't make any excuse. Just pick up the phone and have five conversations. Five conversations, not calls, people that you actually talk to. All right? Awesome. How do you wholesale on market seller finance deal? Um, it just depends, you know, it, listen, if you're going to do a seller finance deal, we either get wholesale price or we get wholesale terms. So if they're, if they're putting it out there on the market and they already have the terms outlined and nobody's buying it, you got to consider it the same as somebody uh, too high of a price. Right. If the price is too high, nobody's going to offer on it. Well, if the terms are too ridiculous on a seller finance on the market, nobody's going to want that. So you're going to have to go and negotiate those terms into where they're very favor favorable for somebody because everybody's seen them. If it's on the market, all the buyers have seen it. That's cash buyers are like, you know, they don't want to do any work. They don't want to do the marketing. They just want deals brought to them in their lap. And so they get agents to send them listings and uh, they'll, they'll review that and they'll be like, yeah, no, yeah, put an offer on, on this, whatever. Right. And uh, if it's a really smoking uh, on market seller finance deal would be snatched up in an hour, two hours. Right. Um, so you have to go in and negotiate that to the point where it's a smoke and smoking deal and not something that they can just buy in the market because then you're, you're not providing any value. You're just being a real estate agent at that point. And if you don't have a license, you're not allowed to do that. So good question. My partner and I live in California. This is from Daniel. Looking swole, Daniel. Look at that guy. Holy, Holy cow. What a lion of a man. Wow. Okay. My partner and I live in California and do deals throughout the state of Indiana. Just locked up a deal Sunday with a 9K spread. Can you say this is the first bell ring of the day? Yeah, you can. Here we go. Come on. Oh. Awesome. Daniel, congratulations. Now, listen. I want you and your partner to be focused every single day on finding a massive deal. A massive deal is a deal where you net a minimum of $50,000. I love the 9K spread. Love it. Do them all day. Go for it. That's absolutely incredible. 50K, 50K, 50. I'm telling you, you train your mind to find massive deals. You will find massive deals. JPO, I'm paralyzed. I don't know what CRM, what dialer, what text blasting to use. Which one is the easiest to learn? To, to learn? Listen, first of all, um, I'm paralyzed is a label. A label. Is a label. A label. A label. That's a label. So analysis let's 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 paralysis. destroy that. Let's just say that you're stuck in paralysis by analysis in the moment. This is just a momentary thing. 
And I wouldn't worry about a CRM if you're just getting going. Um, and if I were you, I would stick to either calling or texting. If you feel more comfortable texting to filter it through, I would use uh, launch control. Do we have the link to that? Everybody that goes to this link, they like set up a personal person that works with them. And it's absolutely incredible. And I'm telling you, all of a sudden, they, they, they're they writing the scripts for you and everything. This only happens with us. It's been, Well, I'm sure it happens with, with other um, people that send them in. But I'm only, I, I was the one that pushed it. So I hope it's just for us. We'll see. So hopefully for our audience, it's, um, it's something special for you. Um, but launch control has been phenomenal. We went and, uh, and use this guys L literally use this code. They help you write it all. They give you a personal person. It's awesome. Um, yeah, you can, you can just use that as a CRM. I wouldn't use it as a CRM. Do we have Matt? Do we have our CRM? I see it over there. Uh, Daniel, can you give me my CRM please that I use for my first million dollars? I'm going to show you right here. This is, this is one version of it. It's right here. You can get it on Amazon. It's an accord right here. Boop. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this. This is January through December. I would write out my leads and people are like, well, I like everything digital. I like making sure that it's clean and precise and I can set and do these things and automatic follow up and all this. Stop it. Until you have a team, stop it. Just write them out, put them in here, pull them out on a daily basis and do your follow up. All right. You don't need a fancy CRM to get started. It stops so many people. It's like the people that try to set up websites and logos before they've ever talked to a property owner. Stop. We're, we're, we're not there. You don't, you, you don't need to worry about any of that. You need to build quality conversations. So first, um, paralysis by analysis is, is real. Perfectionism is real. Procrastination is real. The three P's that we talk about on here. So we, we realize that paralysis analysis is there. So let's destroy that. Um, if you're going to use a dialer, I use Mojo Dialer. We have uh, it. It it um, has been around for a long time. They do a really great job, and it's really intuitive. And so um, we use Mojo Dialer, and uh, it's been fantastic for us. So what I would say though is, when you're starting out. If you, if you talk to people, if you go to like a meetup or you're, you're talking online with people and they're being real and you're talking to them about deals and they're like, oh yeah, I'm almost got a deal or I'm kind of almost there. Every time they're like, well, I have this CRM and I'm doing bandit signs and I'm doing texts and I'm doing calling and I'm starting to do Facebook ads and all these other things and it goes nowhere. Go deep before you go wide. Okay. Don't add too many marketing channels at the same time or nothing happens. Now texting and, and calling go hand to hand, but you really need a lot of phone numbers for texting. So I would probably start with just picking up the phone and calling and building up those, those lists so that you have enough numbers to text. All right. <clears throat> Bina, uh, closed on a deal last week in Texas with a 22 K spread. I wholesaled virtually Never been in the U.S. for real. Well, when I see these things, <laughs> the, the first thing that comes to my head is how soft we are in America. Not, not, not really. I mean, we're, you know what I mean? But like, if we're not taking action and we're like stuck behind like these weird mental blocks and these self-limiting thoughts, and then you have somebody being let us know where you live. Yeah, please. Um, and they just take action and let us know. Did you get it from a call, from a text? What'd you get it from? I'd love to know. I'd love to dig into that. But, and I don't mean that to be insulting. I just mean like, like I, I want to give you a kick in the pants. I want to give you like, Hey, just do it. Just go out there. Dude, we've had more people in the last 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. you know, join our community, join the Rhino <laughs> tribe, you know, from all over the world. More so than than any other time, and they're kicking butt. Yeah, right? doing doing wholesaling here in the U.S. from all over the place. Philippines. Yeah, the Philippines. Wow. Come on. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yeah. The students from Africa. The students from Israel. Students from the Philippines, Australia, Germany Central, Central, yeah. Um, yeah. are absolutely crushing it, and and they're like, this is like crazy. You can't do that here in our in our in our country. It's like, it's the most incredible thing ever. You got distance, language barriers, you know, all that stuff. Through a text. There you go. Up. Congratulations. $22,000. Incredible. Keep it going. So crazy. Guys, in 12 minutes, I'm going to bring on Lou Terendi. 
He is absolutely incredible. He is a unbelievable superstar out of New Jersey and Philadelphia. He's going to break down. We're going to put him on the hot seat for three minutes so that you can hear about an actual deal. So it's not just me up here. Right. And uh, it's incredible. And you need to connect with it. If you're in Philly and, and, and Jersey and you don't know Lou, you are missing out. Um, Sid, literally my first live. I'm two days in on my research. Where do I go to get leads? That's fantastic. Two resources that I would suggest, Sid, just, just off the bat, depending on your budget, if you have a lower budget, I would just get Deal Machine. Deal Machine is a driving for dollars app where you go and you find the ugly properties just driving around or virtually driving around through Google Maps. They have it really figured out and you literally just click on the properties that are in rough shape and adds it to the database, gives you all of the information for the property owners and then you just reach out to them. It's incredible. Um, and then batch leads is another way to pull all of those, um, all of those, um, those lists as well. And you can skip trace at batch skip and uh, get the accurate phone numbers. If you don't have a huge budget, you could do the, you know, true people search or, or white pages or something like that. But if you really want like the best of the best, of the best data and talk to more people and get the more opportunities, the cost versus the value is bananas. So go to batch skip tracing.com. Yes. There's another question. Oh, sorry. Never mind. I'm behind. Caleb. Hey, Brent. We just closed one deal and have three under contract, and it's only the 11th. One through cold calling and three JV deals, not big spreads, but consistent deal flow. Caleb, here we go. Come on. Woo. What a charging rhinoceros you are, Caleb. Listen. Why the rhino? Very specifically, because you charge forward whatever whatever goal you have, you just charge forward. You're not thinking too much. Rhinos can't see that well, right? They're like blinders on. They run tr straight at what they're running at, and they're unstoppable. That's a fact. And they have thick skin. So what do you want as an entrepreneur? What do you want as a real estate entrepreneur? What do you want going after discounted properties? What do you want finding these incredible wholesale deals? Well, you want to have your blinders on. You want to stay focused. You want to charge towards these incredible opportunities and you want to have thick skin. Be a rhino. <laughs> Untethered. Uh, Mojo has leagues. Does the tribe have a league in Mojo? Uh, no. Wow. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. Did yeah. you know that? Mm -mm. Do we have one? In, in Some of the TTP students have like their own little group in it, but it might be something we should look into maybe like for, for sure. Well, listen, guys, we're going to do something that we've, we haven't ever done before next Saturday. Uh -oh. And I Let's don't want to talk, talk too it. much uh -oh. about it uh -oh. because it's too powerful. <laughs> but next Saturday, we're going to do a super Saturday where you're going to see me myself making calls to totally cold to property owners. You're going to see Luke Rotvold. If you don't know Luke Rotvold, follow Luke Rotvold. Can you put his name in the yep. comments so people can follow him? He's absolutely incredible. He is. He's talked to over 100,000 property owners, still does. He owns uh, 40 rental properties and Airbnbs. He makes 17000 a month in passive cash flow. He has an eight, seven-figure wholesaling business and uh, another seven-figure uh, flipping business. He's absolutely incredible, and he still makes calls himself while playing Madden Live. He's going to be on making calls. So you're going to see the best of the best of the best of the best on the phones next Saturday, encouraging you to also make calls. I don't care if it's hand dialing or whatever else. It's going to be an interactive community that is going to be making a huge, huge, huge impact in the, in the, in, in the real estate world uh, next Saturday. We'll get you all the links and everything set up uh, so that you can register for that. Totally right. complimentary. Where are the leads Real quick, from? what's the background behind Super Saturday? Yeah, love it. You, you just tee me up. I love you, Mike. Uh, so when I started out, guys, totally broke, totally like, like did not, uh, still had the judgment on me, couldn't own real estate. I, I would, I, was making calls and I was like, okay, this is cool and it's working, but I, it would sure be fun to have other people do this with me. You know what I mean? Even if they were getting their own deals and uh, I didn't care, I'll provide the lists. And uh, I just wanted to like, like squat up. I just wanted people to do it with me. So uh, I invited everybody to come out on a Saturday 
in, in my real estate brokerage because I've, I've had my license for a while. And all of these real estate agents, I was shocked. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I just want to watch you. So I'd get up, I'd stand up and I'd make calls in front of eight or 10 people for, you know, uh, an hour and get these leads. And they're like, oh my gosh, you just call them up? Like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And then I'd make them do the calls. And then after the like second or third call, they're like, oh, I could do this. Oh, I, this is no problem. And then they start getting deals and blow up their business. And, and, and it's been absolutely fantastic. But because of that, I've, I've met some incredible people, one of them being Billy Bell, who is my original acquisition manager, who now has, uh, I think he makes 800 grand a year and he travels 200 world. days a year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, and, 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 and some other people and, and obviously Luke Rotfold was involved with that and his mom was involved with that, who was an acquisition manager. So it's just a great opportunity. If you've ever been scared, if you've not scared, but just, you know what I mean? Like there's something holding you back. There's a little anchor around your phone that that's pulling it down and not allowing you to use it as the, the portal to whatever you want financially. Um, I want to break through that and I want to show you what it's like and I want you to hear me and I want you to see me and I want to experience it. And I want to party with you and just do this because it's incredible. Again, I've talked to 45,000 people. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, I don't make cold calls right now on a daily basis. We have, uh, we have Fran and, um, and another gal that we just started. Uh, what's her name? Francesca that are making calls for us uh, that do a phenomenal job. But uh, it'll be fun to get on the phone and, and find some opportunities. And, and, and maybe it's not a cash deal, but it's creative. It's going to be bananas. So it'll be next Saturday. It'll be at uh, noon Eastern time next Saturday. So mark it off in your calendar and we'll get real loud. If you go to wholesalinginc.com and you get into the academy, you are guaranteed that we'll send you an email and all the, uh, the invites and, and all the trainings beforehand and all the incredible stuff. So make sure that if you are not part of that, that you get part of that right now. All right. Also, guys, it's a huge help to us, to to the community, to, to bring a lot of positivity and support and tools and trainings to the real estate community. If you subscribe and like this channel, if you're getting value out of it, make sure that you hit that like button uh, right now as you're watching this and make sure that uh, you're, you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It really helps us out. And um, yeah, that's that's just uh, that's one of those, you know, give receive type of thing. So if you can hit that subscribe button, that'd be awesome. Jennifer, direct to agent calls work guys. Yeah, absolutely. I had an agent turn me down all for him to call back and said his client is open. It's all about educating both agent and seller negotiating still going on. Jennifer, absolutely. Yeah, we, we're, we're going to be closing that deal. I talked about it last week. I had uh, called an agent on a deal. It wasn't the, the seller was unrealistic, but he had another uh, property listed at 345. We're going to be closing on it this week at 250. I'm actually partnering on it with Luke Rotvold, uh, who does flips. He does an incredible flip. And what happens is he brings his construction crew. I buy it cash. I pay for the rehab. He goes in and he cleans it all up. He designs it. He gets it all done. My team doesn't have to get unfocused uh, with our wholesaling business. Um, because it was kind of a tricky deal. We have to close on this and I think we'll make more if we, if we flip it, not my preferred method, but I think with this one, um, it's a little bit tighter, but it's a really easy remodel because it was built in 2007. It, it's not an older property. It's, it's not a big, huge rehab budget. And then Luke and I split it, um, split the proceeds on that, uh, 70, 30, which is excellent. So I'll give up 30% if he takes all the, all the hassle off my team's hands to, uh, to flip that and I'll pay for the rehab. And he gets, he gets to keep his crews busy and, um, and, and, and have another property in his resume. So Jennifer, get him. Are my, are my, okay. What's the best way to leverage agent and contractor contracts to find what cash buyers they are working for to add those people to my cash buyer list? Awesome. Well, first of all, <clears throat> build the relationship, right? Here's the thing about agents. They're like goldfish, Right. They have like a 15 second memory. You know what I mean? Unless you, you do something bad, but uh, you, you, they don't remember to send you deals. They don't remember to take your deals to their, their, their buyers. So you have to remind them all the time. I've got this amazing deal. Pick up the phone and call them. Mm -hmm. Get on the phone. Hey, listen, I got this great deal. I think that your buyer would really want it. Are they buying in X area, whatever area this is, right? So I think... You know, a lot of people want to hide behind technology. A lot of people want to hide behind DMs and texts. 
Uh, I'm just telling you, the people that get on the phone and actually talk to people on a regular basis win 10 times more than, than others. They just do. It's just a fact. You just build a more a better relationship. And Army, uh, Army, I would go and and really be homies with, really be friends, like really be like, let's, I want to, you know, once we sell, once I sell this deal, I want to buy you your favorite bottle of wine. I want to buy you some coffee. I want to do this. I want to, you know, take you out to dinner or at least give you, you know, a, a gift certificate to take your wife out to dinner, whatever. Go the extra mile. It's so amazing how people are just like, oh, I just made $20,000 and you don't think to yourself, okay, how do I really anchor this relationship to really make them feel that they're special and important in my life? Well, spend time with them or do something small that's just a wonderful gesture that really builds up that relationship. You know what I mean? Like take it one step for, further and you're going you're gonna to find friends for life, first of all. Second of all, you're going to make an absolute fortune selling to their buyers and, and they'll start telling you the criteria. They'll start telling you what people are looking for. So it's 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 really, really, really awesome. Do we have uh, Lou ready? Oh, yeah. Matt? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, he's he's doing deals. Lou's not in his office. Let's bring him on. Stealing deals. Lou. What's up? How are you, brother? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I am Awesome. I told everybody you are the man to talk to in New Jersey. You're the man to talk to in Philadelphia. You've got incredible yes. buyers. You are wildly and aggressive with your communication <laughs> with your community. I mean, you do, you, you, you answer everybody's texts and calls and you're always connecting with, uh, with people. It's absolutely incredible. So, uh, you got three minutes. We're going to break down a deal. I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Um, really? tell me about a deal you're closing here soon. So I got the, this piece of land that came from a cold call on a driving for dollars. He wasn't interested in selling the property or the, the, the house. I said, you got anything else? You know, the old, that old line. And he's like, yeah, I got this land, this, this piece of land I bought for hunting. You can't build anything on it, but it's on the water with a dock to a waterway, major waterway down here. So I'm like, I'll take a look at it. Let me say it. We go take a look at it. He wants 14 grand for it. I was like, yes, sir. I will buy it. I, I buy it just for myself because it's four acres. I find two months before that, one of my friends says, hey, uh, if you come across any, because he knows what I do, he's like, come across any hunting land. I, I'm looking for some, I got about 50000 to spend. I was like, all right. And real quick, real quick, how did he, yeah. how did this friend know that this is what you do? Oh, I was getting loud, you know, even if my, like, I'm telling everybody. You're right. Even if they got that glaze in their eyes, I'm telling <laughs> them. <laughs> Which most do. Yep. Yeah, they all do. But eventually it pans out. So yep. I, I just married those two together. I, I picked a number of 40,000 and it's, it's sold, you know, sold. So yeah. now this person has hunting land. Yes. That by I the use. water. Yeah. And, and here's the, here's the thing. I, I didn't want him to see what I, you know, I mean, I feel like he'd be a little fun. He'd get funny. So yep. here's what I did. I, uh, Took your advice. I, I got double close it with the hard money. Yep. And then that's where I get most of my buyers from anyway. So I'm, they'd be glad to do me a favor real quick. Um, so you're borrowing yeah. money from your cash buyers. Yes. yes. Amazing. Yeah. And that's just because you bring them deals. Yes. Right. Well, we all bring them. Yeah. I mean, all the community, even yep. the people you sent me quite a few people and we're working on getting their deals sold now. Yep. Awesome. Wow. So you're going to make $26,000 on this deal. Yeah. It might and cost that was me a couple for, bucks. And that was a driving for dollars list that you called. They didn't want to sell their house, but they had a piece yeah. of land because listen, when, when, when you ask somebody if they would consider an offer on their property and they say, no, the next question is completely understand, but do you have any other property that you would consider selling even maybe even a piece of land? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't work every time, but it, tell you what, Quite a few of them did. Quite a few of them did. Yeah. Lou, how can people reach out to you in Philly and New Jersey? Uh, you can get me on my cell phone, 856-812-7442. One more time. 856-812-7442. That's the, the, you're talking about getting loud. You're talking yeah. about getting loud. That is absolutely <laughs> incredible, I, Lou. I, I want that thing ringing, you know? Yep. 
I love it. Lou is an incredible member of the uh, wholesaling Inc. community, the Rhino tribe, and he's helped a lot of people that are just getting started out get their first deal sold in Philly and New Jersey. He can help you out too. Make sure you reach out. Thanks, Lou. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. See you, buddy. You too. See you. Incredible. Guys, I'm telling you, whoo, you know, when you join something, a mentorship, a coaching, whatever else, the real, real, real part of it is the community. The real uh, deals going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth all day long. You can't tell me if you had a proven way to be able to go out and find deals that you couldn't be successful. You can't tell me that if you had a, a community of veteran uh, wholesalers that had your back supporting you, you couldn't be successful. I'm just saying, if you're interested, ttpcall.com. We'd love to work with you. ttpcall.com. That's my pitch for the day, but uh, Lou's absolutely incredible and the community is is growing and it's just the best of the best. It's the most proactive community in real estate investing by That's far. Sure. It's not you, even close. You became a, a wholesaling Inc. Uh, you <clears throat> joined, you know, years and years ago when you were just getting started. And that's how you doubled your business and then tripled your business, mm -hmm. right? And the rest is history. I mean, that's that's the big difference between, you know, the real superstars. They're all in, yeah. you know, one of these great communities. Well, Mike, I just, I mean, you know, we just invested $68,000 yeah. into, yeah. into a um, eight-figure uh, yeah, coaching yeah. Um, um, community. mentorship community yeah. uh, yesterday, 68000 And I remember signing up for Wholesaling Inc. at 5000 I was yeah. like, oh, my gosh, I had like... 6,000 or 12,000 in my account or something. It was a lot. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> holy cow. And that year, you know, when went was bananas, that? uh, 2016. Wow. Yep. Anyway, wow. um, Steven, happy birthday, Alejandra. Brent. Hey, yes, guys, it is Alejandra's birthday today. Make sure that you give her some love. Alejandra has been part of the community for the last five years and, uh, couldn't do it without her. It is, uh, incredible to have you part of the company and uh and participate in these live shows and she's the one picking out all the all the questions and does uh everything else in this business so uh happy Thank birthday you. it's a huge birthday and uh we're excited to celebrate it this weekend uh brent why do you ask about plumbing electrical and roof is that not included in the repair costs or is that additional and how much more steven i love that you Woo! somebody's paying attention i love it and i'm sure everybody is but i love that you asked this question steven because um, I don't, I never ask that question ever. I don't, I'll ask you about the kitchen, the bathrooms, uh, maybe about the floors. I'm just trying to get a feeling on what's going on there. Maybe pool and pool equipment here in Phoenix, because uh, those could be costly, especially, you know, these properties and, and the pools are empty and the, the pool equipment that's, that's 15, 20 K that's a big ticket item. Okay. Um, air conditioning and, 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 uh, furnace, depending on the area, we don't really have furnaces here in Phoenix, but air conditioning for sure. Uh, I think is, is good to kind of see, you know, okay, they've already, they, they've done the cosmetic stuff, but have they done the mechanical stuff? So I don't really get into roof or, or plumbing electrical personally. Um, but, um, some people do just to keep the conversation opening up and, 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 and seeing, um, you know, how much information and how long you could keep them on the phone so that you can ask about the, 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 the timeline, the motivation and what price. And by the way, I mean, um, besides timeline, Ruth on the, uh, on the call, if you're just joining, uh, we, we did a cold call breakdown. Uh, Ruth did a really great job, a really great job pulling out everything except for timeline because they just didn't know. So yeah, Stephen, I don't, I, I don't go that way. I think people do it nervously. In my experience, people, when they're just getting started or they're, they're kind of like, they're, they're trying to take, what I see is people are trying to like take notes while they're having a conversation. And I think that oftentimes that's a mistake unless you're quick with just a pen and paper. If you're trying to like type it in or do whatever, I feel like you're always on your back foot and you're like just a half second behind. And when you're there, you get nervous and you're like, well, what about the roof? And then you finish your notes while they're doing it and you don't really care. Okay. What about electrical? You know, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? You'll know, you'll have a good idea if the place is totally destroyed or if it's in good shape. If somebody has remodeled their kitchen and bathrooms, their plumbing and electrical is probably good. Yeah. <laughs> if they've remodeled their kitchen and bathrooms, then their roof is probably good. If they haven't, then you don't have to just keep like 
piling on and being like, oh, you haven't done any remodeling? Have you have you upgraded the electrical panel? No. Have you have you put new 30-year roof on? <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Now you're putting them in a in a position to just keep saying no or whatever else. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. It it, it just it, it, you can get you can get further by making sure that you really understand why do they want to sell this property and have they made the decision to do so. Great question, Stephen. Really, really great. Brian, how do you go about price dropping? What kind of tonality and energy do you use? Um, there's a couple of different kind of paths here. I'm not really sure which way you want me to walk you down here, Brian. But um, one is price dropping when they want too much initially. The other one is when you have locked it up too high and you need to get a price reduction. Okay. Um, the first one is if they throw out, let's say that this guy in the example threw out a hundred thousand, he doesn't want anything lower than a hundred thousand. And let's say it's in rough shape, uh, instead of remodeled, right? Um, because it, he's remodeled, he's taking care of it. There's no point in just beating him up on price. It's, it's a waste of time. I would try to switch it to creative or just move on before I would be trying to hit him low just to see, but now it's just, it hasn't worked out enough that I, and, and we have more tools in our toolbox now to be able to do something with uh, like an owner finance situation. So I'd switch it to that as opposed to low balling him because that could add a lot of friction to the conversation. But what you can say, Brian is, um, you know, I'm looking around, I'm on my computer right now, actually, Bob, and uh, I'm looking around at what your neighbors um, in, in the area are selling for in similar condition and similar size. And it looks like they're selling for a round. And then you give the calculation. Can you give me the, the quick Zillow um, offer, Matt? Thank you. You give them um, based on whatever it is, the percentage of Zillow here. So if the estimate's 250,000, can we remove the, uh, the comment real quick so everybody can see this? Uh, if it's above 250,000, you want to be around 50% if it needs work, guys if it needs a lot of renovation, right? That's what we're looking for. If it's between 250 and 135%, if it's 100,000 or less, you're going to be at 10% for that offer. And you say, your neighbors are selling for around this price. And you will find neighbors selling for around that price. It's not a lie. You will definitely find within a mile radius neighbors selling for that price if it's in really rough condition, right? But if you try to do that with somebody like this guy, and he's like, yeah, I've remodeled the kitchen, I remodeled the baths, and I've done the roof, and I've done this, and I've done that, and everything's great. And you're like, okay, well, I can offer you $10,000, because he said 100000 So I assume Zillow is probably around 100000 And you go, well, I can offer you 10000 You shut the door on all other uh, opportunities. Don't do that. And most people don't do that, because you're too scared to do that anyway, which is probably a healthy fear, because it's just ridiculous. Uh, but if they're in rough shape, guys, you got to go low. Mm -hmm. You got to go low. Construction costs are up. Financing costs are up. Hold times are up. Construction crews are slowed down. This is real life. We're giving them an offer based on potential value. The as is value. Just think of it this way. If I have, and I wish I was a car guy or something like a 60s Mustang, right? Some like awesome Mustang and it's awesome and people love it, right? And, uh, and, and I kept it in a garage and I waxed it up and I talked nice to it and I, I rubbed the leather with really nice moisturizer so it was nice supple seats and I kept it really original and beautiful. It would be worth an incredible amount. But if I had that same car and I left it in my front driveway in Phoenix with the windows open. for the last 20 years with the windows open <laughs> and birds living in the engine box and the tires completely flat, which screws up everything, and it was just sitting out there forever, you have to offer based on its value. You have to put significant rehab into that Mustang to be able to get full maximum value. So why do we expect people that own properties to get Zillow value? Why do people think that they get Kelly Blue Book for their properties that, uh, you know, they, they had a fire in the back seat? 
You know what I mean? Somebody made it into a junkyard for forever. Somebody smoked literally a million cigarettes inside of it. It's not worth a car that's been really well maintained and really upgraded and loved for and cared for. So stop going after the, the beautiful Mustang that has been taken care of and, and, and lowballing them and wasting your time. But that person that has that Mustang might take payments, right? It's the same thing with houses, guys. It's the same thing. But if it needs significant rehab, you need to be aggressive with your pricing. That might see the 50%, 35%, one more time, uh, Matt, 10% might seem aggressive, but it's real life. Ugly houses. Ugly houses. Big checks. Big checks. Bada boom. Speaking you of know what time big it is. checks. Oh. It's time for like, Mary. Speaking, hold on. Speaking of big checks. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Caleb, here we go. 12K assignment through the cold call and 5K each on the JV deal. Second year in the business. And our goal is 550 this year. Caleb. Listen to me. You want to hit 550 guaranteed? Stay focused. Stay focused. You know how you don't get to 550? You start doing a flip. You start adding to your rental portfolio. You start doing all of these things that take your attention. It is not time management. It is not priority management. It is not energy management. It is 100% attention management. Our brains only have so much attention. And if you're trying to do every single different strategy in real estate investing, you will not be able to get to that level. Wholesale everything. Mm -hmm. For real. Build the machine. It, with that 550, start putting people in place, get a junior acquisition manager, get an acquisition manager, disposition manager, lead manager. You can go to four, uh, two million dollars with four people and then pull yourself out, pull yourself out. And now you're going and you're, you're, you're looking at the best deals and you're getting into flips and you're getting into exciting other things, right? Just build the foundation first, build the machine that's going to give you deals forever. I scream it from the mountaintops. That's exactly what we train on. That's what we build the, our whole community on is building the machine so that it's a servant to you. Then you have the cash and the capital and experience connections to be able to go and get the actual best deals. And you don't get stuck with these really turd properties in the middle of nowhere, that cash flow that totally ruin your life because they're a huge headache. Let's ring this bell. Come on. All right, time for one of my favorite segments here. Here it is. Marry, uh, date or marry? Which property would you date? Which property would you marry? We always like thinking big on this show, so let's look at some big old mansions. Whoa-wee. Look at that. That's a lot of shoreline you got there. Ooh, wow. really look nice. at that, huh? Oh, all right. Isn't that nice? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. That is a palatial estate. Look at all those palm trees. Ooh, palatial. I'll tell you what. I guarantee you that is five grand a month in landscape. That's for sure. At least. That's you even have to scuba dive down to make oh, sure God. it's not. I like this thing. What is that? Oh, that's the climb. That's a diving board. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really cool. Okay, that's number one. Guys, we're going to put a poll up. It's number one or number two here. Mm. Oh, or number two. I know what I'm doing. I know huh. what I'm doing. Number one or number two. This one is more modern. Uh, this one is certainly surrounded by more neighbors. You got much smaller lots. You don't have as much, um, you don't have as much uh, shoreline, so to speak. I don't know if that's the right term because we live in Arizona and we don't have any shores. Lots of lines though. Uh, so number one, beautiful, beautiful. And number two, there it is. Put it in the comment section. I have a feeling. I know what people are going to want, um, but, um, you know, we'll see. You know, it's crazy though, Brent. Like, I mean, what business, right? So Caleb, homeboy, just a minute ago, he's year two and he's going for 550 grand and that's not crazy town. Right. Right. You stay focused, you get consistent. I mean, year two, that, that happens and can happen in this business. Mm -hmm. Oh, a hundred percent. It's just bonkers. Well, there's a, there's a learning curve and the learning curve shortens uh, way faster if you talk to more people, that's it. I mean, I had this conversation uh, and next week uh, it is going to be absolutely incredible. I'm going to be interviewed on bigger pockets and I was talking to their, they, they do this pre uh, pre production for it. 
And I had said, and I said to Jerry Norton, Jerry Norton spent the day with me yesterday. He's got an incredible YouTube channel, uh, Flipping Mastery. I said, I believe that if I, I would, in a perfect world, I would not allow you to buy a rental property unless you have had at least a thousand conversations with property owners. Like that would be your ticket to get in because it would save people so much money, so much time, so much heartache, so much just, <laughs> uh, you guys don't know what's going on behind the scenes here, but anyway, um, it would, I, I would, I would say a thousand property contacts minimum before you can buy a rental property. And uh, I tell that to everybody. I tell everybody you need 300000 in your account before you buy rental property. And I hear it. I hear it. Well, what about all the creative financing? What about all these, you know, what about uh, building your portfolio and, and really building it into something powerful? You know what I mean? Like, great. But it's, uh, huh. is there something behind me? What's what's going on? <laughs> that's just, that's just, stupid. that's stupid. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was, that was Mike's birthday present to all Andre. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I, I, I really think I, if you don't talk to a thousand people before, um, you, uh, buy a rental property, you, you're going to run through a lot of mistakes. You're going to have to learn the hard way. You're going to go to the school hard knocks and that's fine. I get it. And a lot of people will debate me on that. And a lot of people will um, have a problem with that because we're, we're taught to go and, and buy assets as, as quickly as possible and do it with nothing down and use our brains and use our skills and do that st those type of things. But I think if you build the machine that can find you deals, really good deals in really good areas, um, you're going to, in the long term, be wildly more profitable and, and get to your I, I think it's a seven year journey. I really do. I think the first two years is building the machine, Mike. I really do. Um, and the first step is to do your first deal. Second step is to go full time, replace your income. Uh, third step is to build your team. Fourth step, pay off all of your, mm -hmm. your consumer debt. And uh, fifth step is start buying the assets. I and mean, this is important. Like, like in our Rhino tribe, yep. right? So we teach, we teach people to build a, a, a seven level business, right? Yep. So you run a seventh level business. Yep. A seventh level business is a seven figure wholesaling business that's yep. run mostly by other people. 100%. Right? And so stay focused on building that seven level business, you know, for the first three to five years in the business before you get distracted, getting into mm -hmm. picking up all the rentals and all this other stuff, right? Yeah. Well, I just find it incredible that people have student loans, credit card debt, right. car payments, um, and they're buying rental properties. Yeah. And, and like, and creatively to, to get, to get cash flow, to get three, $500 in cash flow that you just give to the interest payments, mm -hmm. Google it January through October, the average American pays interest and taxes. Let it sink in is wild. So I think that there's, there's some huge thing. And I'm not saying, listen, I think it's important to pay off your mortgage in the house that you live in. And I think it's important to pay off mortgages on, on rental properties, but you can, you can have the renters do that. I totally understand that, that, that part of it. I get it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about consumer debt, consumer debt or student loans or something like that. I think you need to get them off your plate. Yeah. And I'm telling you when you do get it off your plate and you start actually being able to take the profits from your, from your, um, from your company mm -hmm. and put them into assets that's when real wealth grows. You're not putting it into, you're not somebody else's ROI. You know what I mean? You're not somebody else's, you're not in somebody else's balance sheet as an asset because you have a, a lot of credit card. And listen, I had a lot of credit card debt. I gave a lot of credit cards back. I gave like a hundred thousand dollars worth of credit cards back in 2008. I had two cars repoed. I had five foreclosures. I had probably the lowest credit score that you could ever have. I couldn't even open up a checking account at any major bank. I had to go online and do some goofy like thing where I sent in like $300 and they gave me um, a, a debit card and they held that $300. Like I had to pay to get a checking account. Like I didn't see that again. And then I was able to like deposit checks. Like I know what that is. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I just, because of that, I, I can speak with personal experience and speak very loudly that um, if you're paying interest on consumer, um, on, on consumer debt and you're trying to buy uh, assets, 
um, you're just, you're just going in a circle and that's not, I, I, this isn't to like, like bash anybody. I'm just saying you can go out there, use what we talked about literally on this show, go out and get these deals pay all that stuff off, build an incredible business. And then now you've got a machine that's going to give you the best opportunities. You've got your credit score back up. You've got cash reserves. Mm -hmm. You've got free time. You've got, you, you can, you can really start building up your, um, your, your, your different channels that you want to go after. I mean, it's just different, different, um, asset channels that you want to go after. I mean, it's, it, that's, that's, what's incredible. And that's what this business has done for me. Uh, that's what this business has done for hundreds of others that I've worked with. This is what this business has done for thousands of people that I know. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. But it starts with quality conversations with distressed property yeah, owners nice. or people that represent them. And, uh, and, and that's just the truth. Uh, Brent, I dare you to get a badass tattoo on well, your big I'll, arms. Put I'll on we've already got one. <laughs> Triple plus. Well, I already got... This wild one that I got at 18 years old. How about that? Ah, right? <laughs> yeah, that was that's interesting. Anyway, so um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm 41. Maybe I'll get another tattoo. You should get Maybe a rhino. Not. I mean, yeah, get a rhino or something on the other arm. It would be ridiculous. I don't know. Like a skull. I don't know. I get it. I, I think that some people's art uh, and, and ink is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I just don't know if I can pull it off, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, at one point, I thought I could, but uh, as I get older, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I can pull that out. I don't know if that's a if that's a look my wife will like. Uh, Arme, got 350 properties added to Deal Machine Free Child this week. Boom! That's a win. That is a win. That's a win. We got to stack these wins. A win is not just closing a deal. This is a big win. I keep blocking traffic while looking at neighborhoods, uh, <laughs> considering getting a motorcycle and riding for dollars. LOL. Yeah, well... Don't kill yourself. All right. There are <laughs> safer options. I, mean, I, like getting, when, I like when you're driving for dollars and the people come out of the house. And yeah. Start, you know, they start wondering down, what happens. Trying yeah. To trying to shoe you. They're like, what you, what do we, what are you doing in my neighborhood? Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to buy properties. Um, the, um, I would rather you like bicycle for dollars or than motor, skateboard. motorcycle for dollars. I just skateboard. motorcycles. It's not an, if it's a win. That's true. Somebody runs you off the road. Uh, Galen, <laughs> that, that's science. Yeah, it really is. Brent, Whatever. when you, would you be able to summarize in a couple words, the difference between batch leads and mm. privy privy? I don't know if I could do it in a couple. I don't know if I could do anything in a couple words. Um, the privy is phenomenal. They do a great job. They're going to show you on market deals. They're going to be able to, cash buyers. um, show you all the cash buyers. Uh, they're going to, it is powerful. Batch leads is better at their data of pulling the lists of distressed properties that are off market and they organize your skip tracing. So you don't keep skip tracing over the same numbers over and over and over and over and over. So if you're going to go off market deals, which, which if you look, you know, from an average standpoint are, are way bigger, not way, I'd probably say double than on market deal size. Some people would argue that and I'm fine. Uh, but I would, yeah, anyway, um, off-market deals are just bigger deals. And if you're going to go after off-market deals, then batch leads is a great. Oh, okay. Here you go. Batch leads, off-market, privy, on-market, cash buyers. But it's phenomenal. Do we have our privy uh, code as well? I will. We, 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 we work with Privy. They're absolutely incredible. Jamil's done a great job of uh, bridging the relationship there between us and them. And, um, and uh, we have uh, Benson. Benson does a great job in the trainings. We have we have uh, trainings three times a week. I mean, three times a day in the Rhino Tribe. And on Thursday mornings, we have one of the one of the different tools come in and really deep dive and give us the the secret sauce to some of the under the hood stuff that uh, that they pull. So it's really cool. Raphael, can title companies uh, get you cash buyers? What I would do with title companies, Raphael, is I would say who are the best buyers? Who's really closing deals? And that's what I would do. If they just send you a list of cash buyers, I don't know. You want to, to get introduced. So this is what I, this is the best way, Raphael. What happens is this is really cool. You bring a lot of business to these title companies, especially any title company that's owned by Fidelity National Title, which they have like 20 different brands. 
Um, if you have them, they have big budgets. What they do is their top people that bring them deals, they do really, really fancy dinners. They'll like get the back of a steakhouse in like a private room and there'll be like 50 people in there and it'll be the real buyers, real investors, real ballers in the area are there. You want to get into that room. Your ticket to get into that room is bring them a lot of deals and tell them I want in that room. And once you're in that room, you got to meet the, the, the top, 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 top people. And, um, it's incredible. And they do different trainings. They, they, they do it under the guise of, Hey, we're going to let this guy train you on whatever else tool that we have, or this is what we're seeing in the market, market updates and stuff like that. Uh, but for the most part, it's just a great networking, uh, opportunity. I remember getting into that. I, re I remember going to dinner <clears throat> and I wasn't part, it was before <clears throat> I was really doing something. And, uh, I think I was just going for like, uh, happy hour or appetizers or something like that. And, uh, I remember I seeing these people that I knew were, were, were big, um, real estate agents and lenders and investors go into this room. And I'm like, I gotta get in that room. I gotta be in that room. And so, um, you know, 60 days, 90 days later I was in that room because they brought them a bunch of deals. And, um, and that's, that, that's part of the, um, the upside of, of really building a great relationship with the title companies or closing attorneys. Great question. Two-parter. Two-parter. Sebastian, my man, Rhino tribe, uh, Brent question for a property that gives us 50 K profit or more. Does it have to be in the price point above a hundred or 200? Typically? Yes. Is there a minimum? I know all deals are different, but if it's a house for 70 K, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be, you gotta be upper. I would say above 200 Sebastian. Great question. Sometimes you can get something that's just ridiculous. Somebody that wants to sell their property for like 25,000, but fixed up, it goes for 200. But even that, remember if you're, if you're between that 250 and 100, you gotta be at 35%. So that's 70,000. And then you sell that for 85,000. So yeah, you can do it. You can do it under 200. It's rare. Um, I would say uh, above 200 is the sweet spot for those big, massive deals. We had a great, great amount of engagement, great amount of audience members. Guys, if you're getting value, again, hit that, um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out this channel and hit that like button. It helps out this specific training. One more question, then we'll do the poll. Okay. One more question. Then we're going to see which property would you marry? Which would you date? <laughs> Christopher, once we comp a piece of land, what's the formula to know how much we offer to a seller? I love it. So Christopher, here's the thing. It depends on if it's rural or if it is um, in a subdivision. Okay. If it's a subdivision, a builder used to want to want to buy that around 20% of what the property would sell for once they build a property. So if a property is going to sell for 500,000, they'd want to buy it at the maximum 100,000 for that lot. Now it's closer to 10 to 15%. So to build it in, you're going to want to be about five to 10% of what a fixed brand new property would sell for in that subdivision. Okay. Now, if it's rural, you want to be 10% of the taxed assessed value. Don't get these confused. Split these out. These are out in the middle of nowhere. These are really rural. You don't know if they have utilities. You don't know. It's, it's going to be a whole thing. People are going to probably put a trailer on it, right? Or they're going to keep it vacant and use it for whatever shenanigans they want to get into. But um, you want to be at 10 percent of the taxed assessed value. So you can, you can find that on uh, batch leads, prop stream, any of those privy. Um, you can get that or, or, or the tax assessor. I mean, you could just pull it up for free on your, um, uh, usually it's the uh, county treasurer or state treasurer, or city treasurer, or whatever it is in your uh, township, whatever it is in your area. Um, but just look for wherever they um, show uh, property taxes in your, in your market. Okay. Awesome. We got anything else? One. Oh, which one? The poll. Okay. We got number one. Beautiful. I think this one's going to get crushed. <laughs> All right. Number two. I thought it was really cool. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, this isn't even fair. It's going to be this one for and sure. Yet. Who won? 
What? Yeah, yeah. By, by a big number mar- one. By a big margin, too. I was, off, I was wrong. I like number two. Holy cow. Come on. I wanted, number one I had 63. Number two. Number one had 63% and number two had 36%. Wow. I, I don't know what currency that is, Matt. You're, that's the euro. <laughs> You're just throwing euros around here. That's hilarious. Do we not? Does, does you, YouTube doesn't allow us to put fake money on? I guess not. No. Uh, well, there you go. I mean, you got to have a lot of euros to buy that property. Uh, Ogden. Hey, Brent, are you also doing direct mail and other marketing besides TTP? Uh, we're really uh, so we've got um, calling, right? TTP got texting uh, that's starting to build back up again. It was really abysmal last year, really, really abysmal in, in 2022. But we got it up. We, we, we did all right because we got a big, massive deal at the end of the year. Um, and then we're referrals. So that's our three big ones um, that that uh, that we're building is referrals is a huge part of our business, whether that's from agents or other investors or people that just need help selling their deals. Um, we've got... Um, We've got the uh, obviously calling, um, and then we had the uh, the texting. So direct mail in Phoenix is is brutal. I mean, you're talking fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to get a deal. Now sometimes we test it out because it used to be five thousand dollars a deal, seven thousand, then it creeped up to twelve. So the, I, I think it's seasonal. I think it's worth you know kind of testing out, being in the place that I'm at. But if you're in a position where um, you know, you're not getting consistent closings and you don't have other people and, 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 and systems in place to take those incoming calls. It turns into a personal nightmare if it's just you, because what happens is when you send out that money, one, you want to return. So there's already built in anxiety, uh, or excitement, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? To, to, to get the calls back, but you really, you really need the calls to come back. And then all of a sudden your life is turned upside down because usually mail hits at the same time. You have all these calls and you don't know if you're going to get these calls at, you know, while you can take them maybe during the day. Uh, certainly if you have a full-time job, I mean, it'll just, you, you miss those calls because you're working or doing something else. You can't take those calls and then they'll call somebody else. I mean, it's like, you know, you're not the only postcard they're calling. You know what I mean? You didn't write some like incredible like thing on a, a postcard or a letter that's they're like, this is the only person that I'm going to do business with. They call everybody, right? There's more competition with marketing just because they're going to try to get the highest and best offer. And um, and you have to be prepared to, to answer those calls. So I wouldn't do direct mail unless you have a system to be able to answer those calls and call them right back. I answer them live. And, uh, and pre-qualify them and not just get a voicemail and call them back. Back in the day, you could just take a voicemail and call them back, and that was fine. Um, but I haven't seen that be effective in a long time. You could test it and, and let us know. Bring it to the show. That'd be great. Richard, what's your process for follow-up when prospects say they may sell later in the year, but no timeline, but says I can reach back out later? Yeah, I would just – I would call them um, – I mean, just – call them once a month. You know what I mean? Maybe every couple weeks. That is a very vague, the problem. I'm yeah. curious any reason why they're waiting. So what, what's important about later in the year? That's, that's, that's what you want to dig into Richard. Motivation. You know what I mean? So what's, what is magical about waiting till later this year? If I could get you the cash right now and you have it in your account in 30 days, wouldn't that be better? Then they go, no, 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 no. I got to wait till my tenant's lease is up. I need to wait till the probate's done. I need to wait till I can get down there to move, you know, some of those. So you want to find out if it's a, if, if they're giving you a, if they're stiff arming you because they think that they have to do something to, in order to sell it or in, if there's an actual condition as to why. You know what I mean? And then you got to be really, really good. And we had this, I, I talked about this a lot, Mike, on our, um, coaching support call yesterday, if then questions are powerful. Mm. If I can, what, if I can, if I can uh, get all of your stuff packed up and sent to you, then would you sell sooner? Yep. Yeah, yeah. If I could take over your lease and keep your tenant in place, then would you sell sooner? Yeah. I love that. If I could put you in touch with a probate attorney to speed up this process, then would that be helpful? 
and you don't want to get too weird with it, but just if then, and you, 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 you just, it, it's really powerful for uncovering what's going on. And then they're like, no, I just, you know, I'm just not really there yet. I just haven't made the decision. And so I don't want you putting too much attention on that. But remember, lead follow-up takes mostly 30 seconds because 80% of the time they won't answer. So you're just planting seeds. So I'd say, you know, call them every two weeks and just call, text, voicemail. And it shouldn't take much time and uh, or a month. I mean, I, I would say probably two weeks. Just to, just I, I just the reason I say two weeks is I want to get them out of there. If they're speed really up, never going to sell, yeah. if they're never going to really sell, so, like what is the motivation here? Can I get anything more? If you're looking at your boxes and you were to fill out a paragraph under condition, timeline, motivation, price, which one of these boxes is empty? Which one can I move the relationship forward and the pre-qualifying forward in the next conversation that we have? So, and this, so Brent, what I just heard was, and this is assuming this is an ugly property, right? So, so, you know, need some love. Yes. Right? There's gotta be a good reason why they're waiting. Yep. Let's try to find out what that is and then use if then questioning to see if you can help shorten that timeline. Awesome. Is that right? And that's it. Yeah. Last question. Happy. Nice. Awesome show, guys. If you missed the if if you missed the beginning, make sure that you go back, check it out. Guys, come on in. Everybody give some love to Alejandra. It is her birthday. It's a big birthday. And uh, so happy birthday. Love you. Um, we've got on behalf of Daniel and Mike and Matt. We love you guys. We support you. Thank you for being on here. You're absolutely incredible. Remember, keep your house clean. Your actual house and this house, right? Protect your health and increase your value to the world. You'll live a fantastic life. See you next week. Love you guys.